If you like this video, why not subscribe? Well, no squirrels today. Not yet. Raccoons, maybe? I don't know. Uh, welcome back to the weekly recap Q&A, everyone. This is the show where I sit in my car because it's portable. And we talk about the uh, comments and emails from last week, along with the accumulated links in the description below. If you're just interested in those, go ahead and look. Otherwise, you can tab away and just listen to me, because all I'll be doing is talking, answering questions from last week, with the occasional annotation, which will indicate what video I'm talking about. So last week we talked about the question of the week was which web show is best and I was looking for input from you guys about which web shows I could look to for good content on the web and you gave me a lot of great suggestions. I'm still in the process of looking at all those shows but I thank you for that uh, so I can see where the quality bar is. I know of a few, I didn't heard of a few of them but you guys gave me a lot of good ones that I'd never heard of before. Uh, this week I wanted to ask about, since we're talking about web shows, uh, I want to ask everyone what they thought about transmedia, and transmedia is the buzzword for uh, things that you'll find outside of web content. Actually, TV shows, movies use them, and they're kind of like supplemental websites, alternate storylines, blogs, videos, pictures, all kinds of things that supplement the story you're trying to tell, and I just wondered if you guys like that kind of thing, um, or if you just thought it was needless. Do you look at that stuff? When you find a show or playing a video game or watching a TV show, do you go onto the web and look for other supplemental material? Uh, I'm kind of curious how people feel about that. Uh, last week, uh, the video I posted was The Making of Hostages. Everyone re really seemed to like that video. The Making of series seems to be popular with you guys, with the audience for this channel. Um, even though, I mean, the videos t tend to be short, but you guys seem to like the information I'm uh, presenting or th things that I learned. I don't pretend to be an expert at anything, but I learn a lot of stuff every time I make a movie and happy to share it. Uh, you guys seem to like that. So uh, this week, uh, we're going to be uh, the tip of the month episode. We're going to be talking about audio sweetening for the cheap microphones we all seem to be using. Things you can do to make your microphones sound better without spending a lot of money. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and get uh, going with our comments. We'll start with uh, this one's from the filming machine. Uh, the comment this com was a comment on the making of hostages, and he asks, uh, "What program did you use to do the animated storyboard?" Uh, I didn't use any special program. I just used Sony Vegas Pro. Um, all the effects you saw in the animated storyboard were basically uh, masking and uh, pan crop tool effects. Masking. I'm just putting one. You know, I. Uh, an identical track on top of each other, or a track on top of itself. And then I was manipulating the track on top so the one would move around you would still have the, the the bottom track. If you've never used masking before, you can Google it, see what we're talking about. And in Sony Vegas Pro, which is the only version that uses masking, I believe, uh, it's really easy to do. The other thing was just, you know, zooming in on the frame, animating those zooms and pans and things like that. It's very simple. I didn't use any fancy program. I just used Sony Vegas which is what I use for most of my stuff. All different things you can use Vegas for. Uh, Mono Seb made a comment on the making of hostages. Uh, he asks, or she asks, did you do some color correction? And yeah, I did. I didn't mention that in the making of video. I should have. Uh, it was pretty simple color correction. All I did really was desaturate the video uh, and crush the blacks to give it a more gritty, high contrast look. Since I was kind of basing it off of the kind of a 1970s crime thriller look. So it was just really, really basic. Just bled the color out mostly. Another comment on uh, the recap show from last week. MGM president asks, I do not want to go to film school. What are you learning there that would make it needed? Of course the degree has validation, but skills are all I want. Do you think I can learn what I need without paying for school because there are so many free tutorials out there? Uh, it's a classic question. Should I go to film school or not? Um, you know, I think if you want to get into the industry uh, go to a film school that employs people in the industry and then you'll be able to network. That can be one of the greatest things about film schools. If you go to a big film school, AFI, USC, NYU, um, you'll interact with people that can probably get you a job sometime in the future. Uh, then there's a lot of film schools that don't really have those opportunities. Uh, like I feel kind of, I'm, I'm at a smaller program, not going to disclose where at the moment. Um, but I think the best thing you can learn in film school, because you can learn all kinds of stuff on the web, and I've been following web tutorials for over two years since I've been doing this channel, um, and you learn a lot of technical things. Uh, probably the biggest thing you don't learn that I've been learning here is how to run a film set, how to be organized, how to like uh, produce a, produ a production schedule, 
Um, all these kind of organizational skills, because most of the time, you know, we just learn kind of how to wing it on set, and we're kind of faking our way through, but you can really learn how to be much more efficient if you're trained to do it. And I'm still learning. I'm not saying I'm completely trained, because I'm not. But that's one thing I really noticed. Um, plus, you know, you have teachers that bring their skills, and they can teach you things you're not just going to learn on the web, because they have a higher skill level that they're sharing with you. Um, but I'm not saying the web isn't viable, because it is. I think the, but the main things I've learned seem to be more from a producing angle, more than a filmmaking angle. Um, and so you also have to have to determine, you know, what you're going to do when you graduate because a film degree really doesn't get you anything. Um, it does for me, since I'm going for an MFA, Masters in Fine Arts, it'll open the teaching door for me, which is something I'm looking to, I'm older. I'm, I have no delusions about going to Hollywood and being a big film director. Uh, I've kind of talked about this before. I'm trying to, you know, make my way through the web, but I also like to teaching to be an option. So it all depends on what you really want and what you really need. And, I wouldn't say film school is a waste of time for everybody, but it would be for some. So you just have to kind of look inside yourself and see what you want and what you need and see if that applies. But that's a great question. It's one that's constantly being debated on the web, so that's my two cents. Um, Hiawatha100 made a comment on the recap show last week, and they asked, I got this idea for an ending of a movie. Now my question is, is it bad to start with the ending when writing a script? You know, definitely not. Uh, whatever gets you writing is good. Well, we all need to be writing. We're probably going to be writing a lot of your own stuff. Um, anything that gets you behind the keyboard and gets you typing is a good thing. If you don't have uh, a beginning or a middle, just start typing. Just start writing, and those things will come. One thing I've really learned is that as you get to know your characters in your head, uh, they kind of become self-aware, and you they speak through you. Um, but they can't do that unless you're actually writing. And you'll just I've noticed, at least for me, um, that when I just start writing, things come into my mind. And of course, the first draft is going to suck, uh, but that's why you spend lots of time tweaking it. So I don't think it's bad to have an ending first. If you have a killer ending, you work backwards. Whatever whatever works for you. Uh, quick picks one, two, three. Made a comment on the Frugal Floater DIY Steadicam. They say, I built a unit just like, shown, just like shown on this video. It was easy to set up with a pocket camera, but when I put my Nikon D700 with an 18 105 lens, I just couldn't get even close. I have plenty of washers. The camera grip is so heavy on the right side. Any suggestions? Well, I haven't tried this with a bigger camera yet, but we've talked about this definitely how uh, DSLRs have a, a more kind of bulky shape and they're not streamlined or small. Um, and I wasn't sure if it would work on a bigger camera. I thought, I think I mentioned this before, that if you just added more washers and more counterweights uh, that that should do it, but apparently it doesn't. So it's going to take a redesign, I think, for a bigger camera. Uh, maybe some kind of counterweight on the elbow, the top elbow of the counterweight arm uh, might do it, but I definitely, you know, it's definitely something like a lot of the things I'm building, there's going to be a 2.0 version, just like the Frugal Crane, which is the next, the first 2.0 version of any of the things that I built coming out this month, March 21st is the target date. Um, so this obviously needs a redesign, just probably like everything that I built, because it's a 1.0. Um, okay, fun, fun, funny Z. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Made a comment on the camera crane jib for $30. They asked, where'd you get the training wheels with rubber groove tires? I got them on eBay. At the time, they cost me $7. Since then, uh, I've seen them for $10. However, uh, I've got a better idea for pulleys. It's actually a little bit cheaper. Uh, I'm going to be talking about on the Frugal Crane 2.0 episode on March 21st. So if you can wait, I would say wait, because the pulley system that I've got... Um, is a little less expensive. Actually, it's probably about the same because I, I upgrade the wire to a cable. Uh, but hang, hang around for that. It's a, it's a better system. There's, be there's bearings involved and steel, and it's just better. So I'd say wait for that. But I found them on eBay. That, that's where I found them. Sly Penguin Production made a comment on the camera crane episode saying, I'm struggling to get the barbell to twist and become tight. I keep drastically stripping off large chunks of rubber. Is then there becomes too large of a gap. Can you help me out? Sly Penguin is talking about uh, when I had the, the padded barbell handle, I'd cut it in half, and I kind of screwed it into the back uh, top rail pipe. It's like the big steel pipe you could actually screw the, the dumbbell handle into so that you could put the weights on the back. If you've seen the video, there'll be an annotation. You can look at it. Um, but if the rubber becomes stripped off, I can kind of see what you're saying. Now it's loose in there, so what do you do? Well, I would say just pad the thing with... Uh, hockey tape or gaffer's tape or duct tape um, so that you get your girth back and then just you know hold it in the end tap it in with a mallet 
that that would work, I think, or a hammer. Um, and it's not going to fall out if you you know if you haven't patted it enough, pat it a little more. You can just kind of jam it in there is sort of the whole idea. But it was easy to to twist it in uh, for me. That's how I did it. All right, uh, we had a comment on three point lighting. Casamania Studios made a comment saying, "Which font did you use?" Um, and this is an older episode, so I had the older font, which sort of looks like Chicken Scratch on a chalkboard or something. Um, the, the font is called Belisarius. It's from 1001 Free Fonts. I've included a link below if you like that font. There it is. You can have it. It's free. Uh, Leocri made a comment on multi-purpose mic for $27. They ask, I'm wanting to use a Zoom H1 for better audio. I'm not all that experienced with video editing other than Windows Movie Maker. Hate that program. What editing software do you recommend, and will it edit out the cam audio? I recommend any version of Sony Vegas. The cheapest one is Movie Studio HD. I've included a link below. All the way up to Vegas Pro. Movie Studio HD is about $32. The Pro version is like $500. But you can uh, also download free versions of all these, uh, free trial versions from the Sony's website, and do a trial for 30 days. And they're completely uncrippled, and you can see what you're getting before you buy it. The programs are awesome. They do so many things. I think it's the best PC editor. I've been using it for years since version 4. It's now on 11. Um, and I think it's a great software, especially for sound. So that's what I recommend. And yes, it's easy to strip the audio from your cam audio. All you're doing is hitting U to unlink the audio and video tracks and deleting the audio track. It's really simple. Okay, we're on to emails now. This one's through my uh, the frugal filmmaker at gmail.com. And Finby sent me a message asking about, hey, I bought a Canon XA10, and now I don't really know if it was a good decision. I don't know whether I should have bought a Canon 5D. What would you buy if you would have to choose? Uh, another great question, the debate. You know, the, do you get a video camera, standard video camera, or do you get a DSLR? And, you know, again, it all depends on your needs. Uh, for me, if you're doing a one-man show or doing a lot of video blogging like this, or you're doing documentary filmmaking where you want deep focus, uh, you want a video camera. Uh, the small sensor basically keeps everything, most things in focus all the time, so you don't have to worry about something you'd have to worry about if you had a DSLR, where you definitely have to worry about focus. You have to uh, ride that focus all the time if you're moving around. or you know. Here's how I look at it. Um, if you're a video blogger or a documentary filmmaker, you want a standard video camera. If you're a filmmaker, a hardcore filmmaker, uh, you get a DSLR. That's a DP's camera um, that has interchangeable lenses, and you know you pull out your light meter and you know set your ISO with it. And it's definitely geared toward that type of a person. Uh, you need an operator for that camera if you're trying to do stuff by yourself. Uh, video camera is easy. You know you do autofocus on your face or whatever. You zoom out and you're done. But you need an operator if you're if you're doing a show by yourself. I would not recommend a DSLR. Or standard video camera. If you're making movies and you've got a DP or you're the DP, definitely DSLR. Those cameras produce pretty fantastic images for the price. So you can still make movies with video cameras too, but that's that's the distinction I'm gonna make there. Okay, Monster Mouth 5 sent me a message saying, Hi. I was wondering if I if you could give any tips in shooting in low light. I use a DSLR and there's always a lot of noise, which annoys the crap out of me. I agree, I hate noisy video. Um, but if you're dealing with low light, uh, you can buy a more expensive camera. Um, it seems like the more money you spend, the better they're going to perform in low light. Like the you know the Canon 5D Mark III that just came out, it's supposed to be really good in low light, like the Mark II was. Um, but if you're dealing with less expensive cameras or less expensive DSLRs, add more light. Make it movie dark. Throw some lights in there. Tin them blue. Everyone, you know, that's the big thing. Uh, moonlight is blue or whatever. Uh, but if you don't want noisy video, you're going to have to add light to counteract that noise. Same thing with any, any video camera. Because if you, the less light you have, the sooner the image starts to fall apart. Um, so take care of the image and it will take care of you. Okay, uh, Michael Parker asks, uh, I recently picked up two Total Lights. Those are the Lowell brand lights, open face lights. It just looks kind of like a bar, like an exposed tungsten bulb basically. Uh, I picked up two total lights with umbrellas and a Smith Victor 600 watt light. I was curious about what you thought of total lights. There are tons of comments all over the net about these lights, and, option, and opinions seem pretty divided. What do you think of these lights? What are they good for? Not so good for. Well, it's an open face light. They spray light all over the place, so you have to manage them in some way. Namely, 
Yeah, I mean, you're not going to point those right at talent. They're just too dang bright. So you got to bounce them off of a white wall or a bounce card, a reflector, an umbrella. Um, and then you can soften them up and they're a little more manageable. Um, I pretty much think they're the same thing as the work light. I mean, you know, the $12 work light or whatever. Totas are like $123, I think. Uh, but a work light is kind of the same thing. It's just, you know, that angry light. You got to control it. Uh, but they have their place. But a work light's kind of the same deal. I mean, it's just you have to bounce it off of something so that by the time it hits somebody's face, you know, it's just not really super aggressive unless you're trying to mimic sunlight or something through a window and then you want that kind of aggressive light. But it has its place. It's not my favorite light. If I was going to get a Lowell kit, I don't think I would get Totas. I think I would get Omnis and Pro Lights because they have barn doors, they're focusable, um, and I think they have more uses because I think a Tota can be pretty much mimicked by a work light because it's, it's, they're both open face. So. All right, so that's it. Uh, I'm trying to make the show a little shorter here. I noticed that views seem to increase the shorter the video is, so I'm trying to uh, not be so long. But again, um, the question this week was, what do you think about transmedia? That's the additional content provided on the web for TV shows, movies, blah, blah, blah. I would probably like to do something similar when I create a web series, which is sort of what I'm, sort of what I'm leaning toward now. Um, so I'm just curious about if you guys actually looked at all that supplemental stuff or if it was just you didn't care. Um, this week, again, we're also going to be doing our Tip of the Month episode, talking about uh, audio sweetening for our cheap microphones that we're using. And I, that's all I have, so good luck, make your movies, and I'll see you Monday. Was there any squirrels?